I uh, do not have COVID, but I stu still have my sinuses, unfortunately. So, you know, I used to feed for all this COVID stuff. I'd get a sinus infection once a year, just, you know, time for sinus infection, so I'd, I'd have that. And, but after the COVID started, I didn't get one. Well, so COVID must be getting over with because I <laughs> had gotten one a couple weeks ago. So, but anyway, <clears throat> we're still in Malachi, <clears throat> but I forgot where <laughs> we're in Malachi. So I'm going to start with chapter 2. <clears throat> and I think that's uh, probably right. <clears throat> Before we start, though, let's have a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this time of study. We're grateful for the record that has been left for us, that we may be able to dwell upon Thy Word. We're grateful for the truths that are presented therein. And we pray through our diligent study we may learn these truths and incorporate them into our lives and be able to teach others. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Let's see. <clears throat> I think in chapter one we had uh, all up first well we talking talking about the uh, the worship. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, this is a type of uh, teaching that's done here is very similar to what's taught in the. Uh, Yeshiva schools, which is kind of a question, you know, you, you pose a question and somebody answers it and then you maybe ask another question and answer that. The, uh, uh, didactic, uh, dialectic method, if you want to look that up, it's very characteristic of uh, Malachi. <clears throat> And uh, in verse 12, he said, uh, talking about my name, you profane it, <clears throat> in that you say that the table of the Lord is defiled with me. And say the table of the Lord is defiled, and the fruit and food is contemptible. contemptible. In the Jewish economy, uh, they're talking about the worship. They're talking about the worship. Uh, and so they were bringing things to worship that defile the worship. Of course, the lesson for us today is what we bring to worship, the way we present ourselves in worship, defines the worship. So that's a good lesson for us to, to learn. <clears throat> they said, uh, 13, oh, what a weirdness. Uh, worship was a burden. They, they couldn't wait to get it over with because they had, you know, their business to take care of this, that, and the other. So they just uh, turned up their noses at the uh, requirements of worship and want to rush. They just want to rush right through it. <clears throat> Talking about bringing the uh, stolen, lame, and sick. I guess they were stealing stuff <clears throat> to, to offer, and then then you bring an offering. And should I accept it from your hand, says the Lord? Well, the answer is no. I'm not going to accept it. <clears throat> uh, be cursed, but cursed be the deceiver. That's the dishonest person. Uh, who has a his flock of male makes a vow. Now, these are voluntary vows. These are not something that forced upon them. So they make a vow. <clears throat> but uh, in fulfilling that vow, he, he uh, offers something that's blemished. <clears throat> and uh, for I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, my name is to be feared among the nations. And I think I said last time, if, <clears throat> if the Jews, by their worship and just their activity, uh, <clears throat> do not fear God, you know, show the proper respect for God, how do you expect the Gentiles to do it? Because they're watching you. Well, the Gentiles are not going to fear God either if 
they're going to copy what you're doing. So, so here <coughs> in uh, chapter two, he uh, uh, he addresses the priest, and the priests are the should be the teachers of the law. In fact, they're they're supposed to be the teachers of the law, and they're supposed to bless the people. But it says. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. <clears throat> and uh, you'll see the same wording in uh, verse 4, this commandment to you. But this commandment is a, uh, <clears throat> um, a curse. This uh, commandment or curse is for you. If you will not hear... And if you will not take it to heart to give glory to my name, <clears throat> says the Lord, I will send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you do not take it to heart. So their blessings, what, what they thought would should be blessings, have been turned to curses. He said, Behold, I will rebuke your descendants. And I think you're using King James Version. This probably says seed. But it has the idea of uh, uh, posterity or uh, those that come afterwards. I will rebuke your descendants and sp spread refuse on your faces. And again, if you're using the King James, it's going to say dung, which is a much stronger word than than uh, refu refuse. Uh, you know, and during the, the sacrifices, of course, they burned all these things. <clears throat> and what was left over was supposed to be taken outside the temple and, and burned out in a field somewhere. That was a, <coughs> the refuse, the, the dung of the sacrifices, if you want to call it that. And uh, <coughs> um, so that was a pretty strong word. You know, dung is a pretty strong word. It says, I'm going to rebuke your descendants and uh, spread refuse uh, or dung on your faces. In the refuse of your solemn feast, again, that's what's left over after everything's burned on the altar. Uh, but it's interesting to note that this is the refuse of your solemn feast. He doesn't say the refuse of the Lord's feast. So they had made their feast, even though it may have been solemn to them, it was their feast. It was not the Lord's. <clears throat> Said one will take it away, t take you away with it. You know, when they take the refuse out and dump it and burn it, it's going to take you with it. Then you will know that I have sent this commandment again, it's the uh, curse. I have sent this commandment to you <coughs> my, that my covenant with Levi uh, may continue. Now, the covenant with Levi was, of course, the uh, priestly covenant that uh, they would, you know, the priest would come from the tribe of Levi and they would offer the sacrifices and they would do the teaching and a lot of times they'd do the judging also. Uh, but the uh, priest had to keep themselves qualified or fit for service. They had to so conduct themselves that they were qualified to conduct these uh, services, to teach and uh, offer these sacrifices. <clears throat> Verse 5 says, My covenant was with him, and that's uh, with Levi, one of life and peace. You might uh, notice uh, in Numbers, I think the 25th chapter, talking about Phineas. Remember the priest Phineas? When it was that one of the uh, men of the, the children of Israel had married a uh, uh, heathen wife, and just you know they were forbidden to do that, and he just displayed it. You know he didn't he made no secret about it. So Phineas, when uh, Phineas, when the uh, you know, they were in the tent, he took a spear and ran ran them both through, and. Uh, as a result of that, the uh, curse that God had placed on the people for this 
was taken away. So he says, my covenant was with him, really talking about Levi, one of life and peace, and that was said of uh, Phinehas. He said, I gave them to him that he might uh, fear me. <clears throat> so he feared me and was reverent before my name. Again, those that are uh, uh, fit for the service. See, the law of truth was in his mouth, and that's got to be the, the word, and injustice, injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and turned many away from iniquity. And you think about somebody like Phinehas, uh, he did it exactly, uh, that's exactly what he, what he did. And there's another interesting thing about this is that uh, you're talking about God's truth, law of truth, and so forth. <clears throat> that is the ultimate uh, ideal, if you want to call it that, that man can live by. Whatever God's will is, you can't get any better than that. Then in verse uh, 7, for the lips of a priest should keep knowledge, and knowledge implies a, a teacher, and people should seek the law from his mouth, and that implies uh, judging. So a, a, a priest must both be a teacher and a judge. And Phineas, again, was given as an example of this. You go back to the 25th chapter of Numbers, and you read about the Phinehas there. <clears throat> For he is the uh, messenger of the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> now the word that's used for messenger is also used for angel. But uh, we know that angel is not always a uh, heavenly host. It can be somebody that's just a messenger. In this case, uh, this priest and so forth, just a messenger. But you, in verse 8, but you have departed from the way. That's the way of uh, the duty of a priest. You departed from that way and have corrupted the, the covenant of uh, Levi. They've shown a disrespect and disregard for the uh, uh, law of Moses. Verse 9, therefore I have I also have made you contemptible and base. And that's a result of what you know, the uh, priests have done. I made you contemptible and base before all the people because you have not kept my ways, but you have shown partiality in the law. That's, that's all a result of their unfaithfulness. <clears throat> Verse 10, have we, all, have we not all one father? And talking about the covenant people, has uh, not God, one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously with one another by profaning the covenant of the fathers? And he's going to be talking about the foreign mar marriages, but another uh, idea here, dealing treacherously, if we are unfaithful, we are dealing treacherously with our faithful brethren. said, Judah has dealt treacherously. <clears throat> they haven't kept the uh, law of Moses. And an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. This abomination is the treachery. And anytime you see Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem together, you're taking in the whole breadth of it, taking in everybody. In verse, uh, <clears throat> continuing on verse 11, for Ju Judah has profaned the Lord's holy institution, which he loves. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this holy institution, I think um, King James has another word for institution of I forgot what it is. 
didn't write it down, but it's it's this holy institution is something that is uh, sanctified, consecrated for a, a uh, specific purpose. is not intended for common use, so that's why they call it holy. But I think uh, you've got King James. What does it say in verse? The latter part of verse 11. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> and the New King James says, uh, holy institution. He has uh, married the daughter of a foreign god. He, in other words, he, he's married these uh, pagan women who have uh, foreign gods as the god they worship, not the god of Israel. And so they've married the foreign gods. In verse 12, say, May the Lord cut off the tents of uh, Jacob. The man who does this being awake and aware, and I think the King James has something different than awake and aware. And the idea that uh, I think King James has master and Scholar. So awake and aware, and master and scholar. You can be a, a teacher and student. Um, and both of them are supposed to be a. The teacher is awake, and the scholar should be aware, or the or the student should be aware of what the the teacher is uh, uh, saying. So they just saying that this is. They recognize what's going on. And who brings an offering to the Lord? The man who does this being awake and aware, and who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts. And he's talking about you know, what's really going on here before. <clears throat> In verse 13, it said, This is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears. So they're very... Uh, sincere, they, like, they have a lot of zeal in what they're offering and so forth, but it's not uh, being obedient. What they're offering is not in accordance with the, uh, the uh, will of the law of Moses, and that, and that be the will of God himself. They're doing it zealously, but they're wrong in doing it. <clears throat> so you cover their altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and, and uh, uh, crying, <clears throat> and the Lord pays no attention to this. And I don't care how much they uh, cry and wail and so forth. He does. He, he just so he's, he says it does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive with with uh, goodwill from your hands. <clears throat> so they may be putting a lot of effort into this uh, uh, sacrifice, this worship here. But it's wrong, so God is going to ignore it. In verse 14, <clears throat> uh, yet you say, for what reason? You know, why, why are you displeased with us? But because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously, <clears throat> Again, treacherously, you're, just, you're being dis disobedient to the law of Moses. So when you're disobedient to the law of Moses, those that are trying to do right, it, it's dealing treacherously with them. He said, yet uh, she is your companion <coughs> and your wife by covenant. <coughs> so what they were doing, you know, they uh, had a wife. They would marry someone within the uh, Jewish people in their youth and then later <coughs> they're putting these people away <coughs> and marrying uh, the heathens. He said, <coughs> but did he not make them one, the wife of your youth, did he not make them one? God has joined together, you know. 
having a remnant of the uh, spirit, and that's just respect for the law. <clears throat> and why one? Why did he make them one? Because he seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. <clears throat> that's the spirit of uh, righteousness. And that none of you deal treacherously with the wife of his, of his youth. <clears throat> Uh, anytime you, you disobey the law of Moses and dealing with the one that you that God has joined you together with, you're dealing uh, treacherously when you uh, when you mess with that. <coughs> For the Lord of God of Israel, verse 16 says that He hates divorce. <coughs> this has always always been the case. <clears throat> and the and the uh, standard has always been a one woman for one man. It was never intended to be uh, two women for one man. That was never the intent. God did allow it, but it was never the intent. <clears throat> so the Lord of God of Israel says that he hates divorce. For it covers one's garment with violence, and violence has to be the violence of iniquity. It doesn't mean that they do physical harm to one or the other, but iniquity causes harm, so it's, that's considered violent. And the Lord said, uh, therefore take heed to your spirit. Uh, again, that, that uh, phrase is used again, that you do not deal treacherously. Verse 17, you have weird the Lord with your words, yet you say, in what way have we weird him? In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Oh, where is the God of justice? We're going to find the answer to that uh, here later. So it's the old scenario, uh, evil is good and good is evil, according to them. <clears throat> so, we get down to chapter 3, and, and there's going to be a lot of uh, reference to other scriptures. See, behold, and this is how he's going to answer, how he's going to deal with all this. And it's really the... Uh, uh, prophetic announcement of the coming of the Lord that's going to take place when Jesus comes. He says, Behold, I will send my messenger. Remember, a messenger can be an angel or just someone that, that's uh, uh, carrying a message. And in this particular case, <coughs> uh, this messenger, and we'll demonstrate that, is going to be uh, John the Baptist. I will send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Now I'll give you a few verses here, and we'll we'll read them. <clears throat> In Isaiah, the fortieth chapter, verses three. <clears throat> keep in mind, I will send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. In Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse 3, he says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Now, where is that used? Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And, and just keep that in mind. And also, uh, Matthew the third chapter, verse 3, you'll also find this in, in the other uh, four gospel accounts, other uh, three gospel accounts. <clears throat> For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Of course, this was uh, spoken of in conjunction with uh, John the Baptist. <clears throat> In Luke uh, 1, 17, we have this reading. <clears throat> he will also go before him in the spirit and the power 
of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make a people, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So he was paving the way. This is again about John the Baptist and down in that same chapter, verse 76, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. And again, this is talking about John the Baptist. Uh, you know, when he was meant to be born. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. So he was the uh, uh, forerunner. <clears throat> In Matthew, the uh, 11th chapter, verses 10 through 14, it says, For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I will send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before me before you and it's again talking about John the Baptist and says it here yes, surely I say to you among those born of women there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he and from the days of John the Baptist now until the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and he would and the violent taken by force for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. <clears throat> of course, the uh, <clears throat> law is going to be taken out and the prophets, are going to, there's not going to be any more prophets. And if you're willing to receive it, he is, talking about John the Baptist, he is Elijah who is to come. <clears throat> and down in Matthew, the 17th chapter, he says, and his disciples ask him, saying, who then do the scribes say that uh, Elijah must come first? Jesus answered and said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has already come. And they did not know uh, him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. <clears throat> Then the disciples understand that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. <clears throat> so this is prophesying that this messenger is going to be John the Baptist. That's the one that's coming. <clears throat> and continuing on with the first verse of chapter 3, And the Lord, well, I've got to start over. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way <clears throat> before me. And the Lord whom you seek will, will suddenly come to his temple. And here the temple has to be the spiritual temple. Even the messenger, in this case the messenger is uh, Jesus. If you have a King James, and the New King James Version, this messenger is probably capitalized. And that's because uh, those translators knew that they were talking about Jesus. So, you know, consequently capitalized it. Said even the messenger of the covenant, Jesus, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of her host. When he says we will suddenly come, it means people are not going to be expecting it. It's going to be uh, unannounced, it's going to be at once. And of course, we know that uh, for the most part, people did not uh, accept him. In verse 2, it says, Who can endure the day of his? coming uh, well they're going to endure it but the fact of the matter is <clears throat> he's not coming as they expected that he would come they expected somebody to uh, take over as the king of the nation as was David it's going to be an earthly king so he didn't come as they uh, uh, people expected and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. And he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And if you ever dealt with, uh, well, probably not silver, but lead or something like that, you know, you may put something in to get the dross out. And that's, that's what he's talking about here, this uh, refiner and purifier of silver. 
He's going to, he's going to get the draw sap. He said, He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of uh, uh, Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering uh, in righteousness. Now, is this talking about the the uh, Levitical priesthood? Probably it's talking more about the priesthood of Christians today. You know, we're our royal priesthood. We have been purified, if, if you will. It qualifies us to be uh, uh, a royal priesthood. <clears throat> And we will start in verse 4 next week. <laughs>